Hi, I'm Matt from HockeyReviews.ca and this video is going to specifically talk about pad sizing and specifically on the Warrior G5 and previous ones from the G5, so G4, G3, G2, yada yada, to the newer pad sized Warrior pads, which is the G6 and the G7. While this video would be helpful to people without just the Warrior pads, this is specifically for Warrior pads because the amount of comments I see on these two lines about having to change your sizing based on if you wore a G5 or if you wore a G4 or if you wore a G3. And it's honestly like basically impossible to fight this information that's wrong. And this has a lot to do with strapping. So that's why it could be helpful for other pads. But this video specifically is going to go over the G5 compared to the G6 and 7 for sizing and give kind of examples of why pads fit the way they do and how sizing might feel different but it really isn't and it's something else which is the strapping which is causing some changes on here one thing i want to say before we jump into everything here i have tinkered with a lot of pad straps and kind of figured out how things should work and not work for me everyone's obviously gonna be different for example this toe tie position kind of causes problems when it's too low if you have questions on it if you're having an issue with your setup and it's not working like the G7s or G6s or any pads to be honest, and you're like, well, this is happening, what should I change to adjust it? Feel free to reach out to me, comment below, I'll kind of help out that way as well. Or message me on Instagram, I'll answer the best I can, I can talk you through things and try to figure it out. Because obviously you want your pads landing like this and not like this, and strapping makes a huge difference on that. So first, let me get some background on these pads specifically. The G5s were the first warrior pad I wore since the G2s. It was the first pad that like they revamped with the core that was a lot better than I thought they did previously. And the G6 made them a lot better as well. One thing that is on the G5s that people kind of ignore right now when they're talking about sizing things is this kind of boot riser on here. This has been on, I think like all warrior pads. I'm pretty sure it was on my G2s as well. And it's still there on the G7. So you can see it's a little wider, but the actual idea of that boot riser is still there and honestly this is still in pads today warrior just kind of spreads it out so they add that boot riser to this material and kind of take away all the rest of the material other companies just do it flat all the way across it's the same idea just different execution on it and the g6 you could see same idea as well you still have that boot riser it still does the same thing it's still hard foam that pushes the pad up on your skate a little bit same with this and the whole boot idea and everything on here didn't change between the two. So a lot of people are saying the new boot on the G6 compared to the G5 and on the G7 as well is causing sizing differences on the pads and the boots are basically the same to be honest. They have that flexi backwards boot on these ones and they play basically the same way. This one's a little bit more flexible upwards, but overall play the same way. And the boot itself isn't what is changing sizing on these pads at all. There is a big difference on G6 versus G5, that's core stiffness. But core stiffness doesn't really affect pad sizing unless you really crank these down in terms of folding them over, which is what people are doing. Now these are a stiffer than stock one. So this one is stiffer than stock, but still soft-ish and you can still get a flex on there if you want it to. The biggest change here though, and the reason why people are getting really confused in terms of strapping, and this is also on the G7, so I'll show that in one second. It's the inner calf strap. So. Obviously you can see these two had a very similar wing wrap idea on here with both of these, which is totally fine. But Warrior added this piece in here. So this is kind of acting like a professor strap. You can see it attached here, it goes through here. You could pull it on the outside as well. But the idea of this is to wrap your upper leg and kind of hold it in place like a professor strap does. Professor straps became very, very popular with strapping and people talk about it all the time. Blame social media for a lot about that. The idea of this is to kind of hold the pad up and it kind of sits above your calf. This didn't exist in the G5. This is an aftermarket strap I had to add to my G5s to make them fit correctly because they didn't, they were too small. So that would pull the pad up. The whole thing of these professor straps is it pulls the pad upwards and it makes the pad play a bit taller than what you're expecting. So when people go into these pads and have this strap in here, this strap is actually tighter to stock. So I believe this was on one of the other rungs. I loosened up as much as possible because I don't like that strap being tight and really existing at all. So this strap 
comes tighter and people put it on and they kind of feel it, but they don't really know what it does. It ends up pulling the pad up your leg. So it makes the pad feel like it plays taller and bigger than it really does, but it's really the strapping. And I'm gonna do a side-by-side -side on these on my skate to show you really how that strapping is affected as well. And this strap also exists on the G7. So people are also talking about this with the G7. It has this strap right here. Same idea as what was on the G6 in here. I took it out of this wing completely just to make it as loose as possible. If you want it tighter, you have two spots in there now to put it. So you can really make this tighter and act like a professor strap. I don't like that type of idea in strapping. I actually took this off completely, but then I found it just to be too loose because this strap wasn't really doing what this whole wrap kind of does. It's a lot more simple as you can see. So I had to add it back into my pads, but this gives you an idea of how these pads work. And it really, it's the internal strapping that's doing everything. The actual size of the pad itself is the same and and it doesn't make any difference and you want to support the channel and you need a base layer and a protective kind of supportive base layer that helps protect your growing as well as your hips check out the cortec this is the pro 1.0 pants so this one is not quite as restrictive and this is kind of tight right here in this x pattern you might have seen these as under armor before or bower for the hockey specific ones there's also the core 3.0 which is a lot stiffer as you can see really helps protect my growing and keeping it kind of in place and make sure it doesn't overstretch itself there's a discount code and you click the link in the description use that discount code to get a discount off help support myself as well as get you some pretty awesome base layer pants that really do help with injury prevention and help stabilize your core while playing otherwise if you want to support the channel and you don't want to buy anything hockey related you can check out the links in the description to buy me a coffee anything that goes through any of the links always comes back into my channel so i can make more content and do more videos so both of these pads are 35 plus 1.5 and when I wore them specifically, I had issues falling out of the top of the block a lot. Generally, when I just went down normally, you were kind of okay, but anytime I tried to stretch or I was kind of sliding, I would fall out that top of the block. Now, both of these pads are the same pad, but you can see how they fit very differently. That one is riding way off the boot. This one is riding down on the boot. You can see down there. And that is all because of strapping. This one has a professor straps and the knee strap on here tight. PGS strap in here acting like a professor strap or rotation control strap, some companies call it. And that is pulling the pad up my leg and it's basically getting that strap stuck on my calf so it won't go lower. Pulls the pad up, especially when you drop. You can see this one is just wearing a lot looser and totally normal. This is closer to what I would wear my preferred pads as, something like this where it doesn't kind of get stuck on my leg and can kind of float around. But for sizing, it doesn't work very well for me. This is hard to do because it's dropping on synthetic ice, but I'm going to give it a shot. So I noticed when editing this video from the front, you can't actually see where my knees are on top of the knee blocks themselves. So here is kind of an idea. I'm, this is the pad with that professor strap on the G5 and that's kind of where my knee ends up landing. This one is on the G5 as well, where it's too small because my knee ends up landing really close to the top right there. Now, another thing that happens when I'm dropping down on these in the video, you can see me holding this pad. When I drop every time on the pad that's too small, I don't always drop on the top of it. It more or less happens in like almost desperation plays or just when you're sliding around a lot, dropping up and down isn't the big problem. It's once you start moving that it becomes a problem so it doesn't show off the size problems as much. So that's why I'm kind of holding that to make sure it lands where it really should. But you can really see this is basically how these pads end up playing for the size differences with that professor strap, it ends up in the middle. Without it, it ends up on the top and you can see how the force is really pushing this piece over because it is right on the top there. When I land, you can see the difference on my knee locations between the two pads. Same size pad and this isn't gonna be the exact same every time you drop. Generally, you want your knee to be in the right, like same spot over and over again in the right spot. When you wear loose pads, obviously you can move, yeah, yeah. But for this, this is kind of what would happen with these pads a lot. With the professor strap, my knee's landing right in the middle and it's perfect. With this, I'm landing high. So the problem with this is anytime I really try to make any movements, you can see lifting off the ice, my knee is kind of coming over the top. So if I'm not like kind of leaning back, it will be a problem. If I'm stretching out and going down, it becomes a problem. So this pad isn't the right size for me and that's why I had to go up to a 36 with the next one which I'll show in a second. You can see how I can make a 35 plus one like this work on this one, same pad, exact same specs, just by using that strapping system. So this strapping system plays a huge, huge role in terms of how these pads fit and how pads work and because the new ones have this built in, people are kind of getting confused with that. 
And here we have a 36 plus one and a 35 plus 1.5. And because it kept falling off the top of this pad, I ended up going with 36 on my G6 and the G7, which this is obviously the G7, which is 36. So strapping with this pad right now is how I kind of like it. I would normally do this one up, but I'm leaving it undone just so you can actually see my knee on here and everything. And when I turn around here, you're gonna see a big difference of these two. You're gonna see how much more open this was and doesn't have that calf piece and how this one does have that. So you can see there's no strap in here and no inner calf strap. That professor strap, the PGS one on the one I showed previously, did a lot of the work to pull that pad up. Here, all you have is this piece to go down here, which you can kind of tighten to sort of do it, but it won't work as well as that strap that's in here, really grabbing your calf and kind of pulling the pad up with your knee. Back here, you have this strap that really, if you do that tight, acts like that professor strap and pulls it up. Because it acts tight, and this is already at the loosest one down here, I wanna make this loose like that and just like this. Normally I would go across the knee because I don't want this strap to pull the pad up at all, but for demonstration purposes, I'm just putting it down here just because it's easier to see everything on here. You can see the difference in my knee positions on here. So again, with this view, same thing, you couldn't really see it, so I'm putting this in here and I'll put it on the side so you can get an idea. And this one is too tall. You can see, again, the force going right on the top there and this is right in the middle. Now, if you're saying this is too small on you, really when I actually go upwards and I'm actually leaning up, you can see the force of the knee is right in the middle there and it's where it should be, where this one, again, that force is right at the top where it shouldn't be. So this ends up being like the right size and we'll leave this here so you get an idea. 35, 36, G7, G5, so sizing on here looks like this. This isn't where people are saying you have to go a size down with this pad. This pad is too small on me. My knee is right at the top of this block. This pad is perfect. My knee is right in the middle. The pressure point is right in the middle. Some people might want to see that a little higher. It works really well for me. And I know a 35 isn't going to be what I'm looking for. This should very clearly show that no, you don't have to drop a size going to the G6 or G7 when you're in a G5. It's all about the strapping. And when I cranked this strap, so it's really pulling up my leg a lot, you're really gonna see how too big this pad would be on me because of that strapping system. And I go down and you can see I'm landing at the bottom of the block. But 35, 36, you can see that strapping making all that different. Loosen those straps off a lot and I end up dropping right in the middle just like it should be. So there's a lot of bad information out here on the G6 and G7 pads and strapping to be honest, there's a lot of bad information of all goalie pad strapping, but Warrior has done a really good job on their pad sizing and they've always fit basically the same from one generation to the next that I've noticed and follow their sizing chart online because that's the best indicator. This seven, I will never recommend people dropping down a size unless they decide to totally change their strapping system. If you've had a G4 or a G5, with no professor strap like this, you're not going to want to change your sizing if you make these straps looser. If you had a professor strap, you just wear these, like it's gonna be a one-to-one -one adjustment. You don't have to do anything. But if you did what I did, where these were too small, so I need a professor strap to pull up, you go to these and it's like the right size for you. You take that inner calf strap, loosen up, and you end up landing right where you want to, and it works the right way. Another big part about sizing too is the toe tie system and the strapping and everything. So I actually learned this on my G7s for fiddling with strapping. Their toe tie strap on this one just going from the toe and it is honestly too much on the toe and the pad can just slide down my skate too much. You can see how far that is down my skate and I found a lot when I was landing, I was landing too low on the block because of that. Once I did the strapping through the middle, Right here, you can see it's no longer on the toe. The pad can't slide way, way down there as much. It can still go down a bit, but it can't like drag on the ice. Like you can see basically on this one where it can drag on the ice. Because of this, it wouldn't allow the pad to slide down my leg. So when I would go down, I ended up right in the middle of the block where I wanted to, where with that looser, I would often go below the knee block and obviously you don't want that. Again, this position didn't really show off when I was trying to show it when I was editing, I noticed it. So we're putting this in here. This is the pad where the toe ties are right on the toe and your pad basically can slide up and away from your skate. And I'm landing too low on there where this one is where the toe ties 
are kind of through the middle of my skate and it ends up working pretty good as you can see right in the middle so again that gives you an idea of the differences this is obviously way too low but once i adjust that strapping it ends up working right but that's another strapping example of how your pad is strapped to your leg and your skate how it can affect the sizing because with that through the middle it kind of locks it from sliding down without it you can slide down and go way too far down but again this is the right size for me 35 was too small for me on g5s g6 and 7s 36 perfect fit for my knee and they work exactly how I want them and everything. If you have issues, message me. I'll try to help you out. I'll run through some things and hopefully we can figure it out because you shouldn't have to change sizing. Follow Warrior sizing chart, go buy that. It's the best way to do it and they're pretty spot on for it. So this also isn't like the best indicator of pad sizing or anything, but I'm gonna show it here because people are gonna stand these pads next to each other and I've seen it already, people online standing the G7 and the G6 next to the G5 or G4 and be like, these are way too big. I'm gonna show you how this actually works. Both of these are on my skate. They're both done upright. The strapping is just normal strapping. No professor strap, nothing crazy tight here. It's on my skate, as you can see. We go on this side. I have the professor strap attached, but it's not actually doing anything, so it's not pulling anything up. And it's on my skate, way down there. The calf's a lot bigger. But you can see that is on how it is. And when you line them up, that's a 36 plus one. This is a 35 plus 1.5. So you can see the differences. And when you line these up, you can see the differences here as well. And if we bring out this little measuring tape, and I can't really do this with one hand, you can see it's basically an inch from the block to the top. So it's not a big difference. And this is exactly kind of what you'd expect on these two pads. This is a 36 inch pad. This is a 35 inch pad. Yeah, there's a size difference because one was too small for me, which was a 35, so I went to a 36. These pads fit pretty true to size. I'm going to link Warriors, uh, it should be Florida knee chart. I can't remember exactly what it is, but I'm gonna to link to their customizer chart that talks about the sizing in the description and on the pinned comment, so check that out. And that is what I'm gonna recommend people go off of, specifically with that. Like, yes, this pad is straighter, it's a bit stiffer. Like, you can't really pull this down. It's a super stiff one, this one you can pull down. So I have a feeling Warrior soft pads in the past too, have been so soft and people have really pushed them and crushed them and shrunk them that way that that might be doing something on them but for their actual sizing chart and everything they are fitting the way they're supposed to. so make sure you check that out below if you're looking at these and you want a custom pair or if you're thinking of what pair to buy or what size to buy go buy warrior sizing chart and it's it's spot on so at the end of this very long video if this video was helpful be greatly appreciated if you let warrior know so like warrior goalie on instagram and stuff that my video was helpful to you in making your purchase greatly appreciate on my end let them know that these reviews are helpful and these videos are helpful and people want to see more of them if you want to support the channel so i can make more content like this and doing more videos check out the links in the description to hockey supremacy if you're in canada pure hockey if you're in the us clicking any of those links and making a purchase gives me a kickback that way i can make more content and do more videos and do more reviews otherwise if you want to support the channel without buying anything hockey related you can check out the links in the description to patreon and buy me a coffee everything through any of those links always comes back into the channel so i can make more content like i said and do more videos thank you very much for watching and take it easy you're watching hockeyreviews.ca